A lot of motorcycle crashes occur in corners. In fact, most single vehicle motorcycle crashes happen in corners. This week on MC Rider, we'll talk about three important techniques that we should focus on for negotiating a corner with precision and control on the street. The first thing that we need to think about is our entry speed. The ideal entry speed for a corner on a motorcycle is dependent on several factors, including the rider's skill level, the motorcycle's handling characteristics or ability to lean in the corner before hard parts start hitting the ground, and the road conditions. In general, the slower the speed at which you enter the turn, the more room for error you'll have at negotiating the corner. However, entering a turn too slowly can result in a loss of momentum, making it difficult to exit the turn effectively or maintain balance throughout the turn. So it's important to find that appropriate entry speed based on your skill level and several other factors. Striving for a balanced approach where you can enter the turn at a speed that allows a smooth transition through the turn while maintaining a steady pace is key. It's also important to keep in mind that factors such as the road surface, the weather conditions, the type of turn that it is can have a huge impact on the ideal entry speed as well. So riders should continually assess the road and adjust their speed as needed. There are several factors that affect the proper entry speed for any given corner on a motorcycle. Some of them are road conditions, the road surface, including the grip level and any debris in the corner. So in the fall time, the leaves get on the road, you know, that can cause a hazard, especially when they're wet. Or gravel, stuff like that can greatly impact the ideal entry speed for a corner. Wet, slippery, or uneven roads will require a slower entry speed as well to maintain control. Next, motorcycle handling. Different motorcycles have varying handling characteristics. Sport bikes made to lean way over into a corner where a cruiser hard parts are gonna hit the ground with a whole lot less lean angle, and this can affect the ideal entry speed. So a heavy, high-powered motorcycle may require a slower entry speed, while a lighter, nimbler motorcycle may be able to handle a faster entry speed. Another impact is the rider's skill level. A more experienced rider will have a better understanding of how to balance the need for speed with control, while a less experienced rider may need to enter a little bit slower in order to give them more room for error and maintain stability throughout the corner. The type of turn, so different types of turns, such as a tight hairpin or a fast sweeping curve will require different entry speeds. Tight turns obviously require slower speeds, while faster turns may allow for a higher entry speed through that corner and still maintaining control. The weather conditions, so rain, wind, or other weather conditions can affect the ideal entry speed. In adverse weather conditions, slower speeds may be required to maintain control. Visibility has a huge impact. So poor visibility at night or in fog or rain impact the ideal entry speed by reducing the rider's ability to see and anticipate the corner. Also, how well a rider can see all the way through that turn has a huge impact on the entry speed for a corner. So if you're approaching a corner and there's, you know, an obstacle right there in the corner that keeps you from seeing all the way through the corner, that's gonna impact your entry speed. It's important to realize that where you look when cornering has a huge impact. When cornering on a motorcycle, it's important for the rider to look ahead and through the corner. So you're looking all the way through the corner. You're looking for the exit of that corner, not just at the ground or 15 or 20 feet in front of you. you as you're approaching the corner, you wanna scan through that corner and look through the corner. Look where you want the motorcycle to go. This helps a rider anticipate the turn, making necessary adjustments to speed and line along the way, and maintain a smooth, steady pace. By looking ahead, the rider can also identify potential hazards or obstacles in the road, allowing them time to react and respond. So I can only react or respond to something I see if I'm looking 20 feet in front of the motorcycle and there's an object in the road through that corner that I could see by turning my head, I'm not gonna have time to react to that until I physically see it. So looking through that corner is gonna give you time to respond. So if there's a hazard in the road, it's important to see it as soon as possible and to avoid target fixation. 
Target fixation is that phenomena where riding a motorcycle, the rider focuses too much on a particular object or obstacle. So if there's a big rock in the road, they stare directly at that rock. A lot of times you'll see riders looking at the outside of a corner. If there's a guardrail, they'll fixate on that guardrail instead of looking through the corner. And that causes them to steer towards the obstacle that they're trying to avoid instead of away from it. This occurs unconsciously and often leads to accidents if the rider is not trained to overcome it. To overcome target fixation, riders are encouraged to regularly scan their environment, looking through their path of travel, keeping your eyes moving, and avoid staring at individual objects as you're riding. It's important for riders to maintain peripheral vision and keep their eyes moving. Scanning that road ahead and looking through the turn as described previously, this helps the rider anticipate potential hazards and make necessary adjustments to their line and speed while riding. By avoiding target fixation, riders can maintain a greater level of control and increase their overall safety on a motorcycle. Being smooth with the controls is also something that a motorcycle rider should focus on while cornering. You hear a whole lot of instructors talk about being smooth on a motorcycle, but you hear fewer instructors actually say what that is or how to implement it. So here are a few tips for being smooth on a motorcycle. Your body position is important. On a cruiser or standard motorcycle, maintain a relaxed upright position Avoid being tense, you know, in your shoulders and your arms. This is going to help keep the motorcycle stable and reduce the risk of losing control. In particular, make sure that your arms are not locked out, locked in a straight position. So if you try to rotate your arm, it looks like this instead of like this. If you can't flap your arms like a chicken, then you've got your arms locked out and you want to keep some bend in those elbows. Smooth inputs on the controls, so smooth throttle, brake, clutch control helps maintain balance and stability. So avoid sudden acceleration or deceleration off the throttle, being smooth with the clutch, being smooth on and off of the brakes is something that's going to help you maintain control through the corner. I've got an exercise in the field guide to help develop smoothness on a motorcycle, so if you're a member, head over to the field guide and look for that exercise. Anticipation, anticipating road conditions such as changes in surface, inclines or corners helps make the rider smoother. Gradual adjustments to their speed and line through that corner can only happen if a rider is anticipating and anticipation can only happen if a rider has good head and eye discipline so they're looking up the road because you can only adjust to what you can see. Focus. Maintaining a clear, unfocused mind free from distractions helps the rider make accurate, smooth inputs and react quickly to changing road and traffic conditions. So if you're thinking about what's going to happen when you get home or you're thinking about what just happened at work, you're not riding in the moment. You've got to keep your mind focused on what's happening right now. Practice. As with any skill, practice and repetition can help riders improve their smoothness on a motorcycle. Practice in a safe, controlled environment and focus on making smooth inputs and transitions. So to recap, some techniques to focus on for better cornering. Find the correct entry speed, good head and eye discipline, and being smooth with the controls of the motorcycle are going to have a huge impact on your ability to corner a motorcycle safely. Many of the techniques mentioned here do not come naturally to many riders. You're not born with them. They have to be developed through conscious awareness of them and through regular practice using the correct techniques. There are several exercises in the field guide to help you develop and practice these techniques. I hope you'll consider supporting the channel and getting access to the field guide and using it to help you in your practice sessions on any open parking lot. Till next week, guys, it's Kevin with MT Rider, and I'll see you on the road.